Hello everyone and welcome to my guide to security craft. Today I'm going to be taking you through all the different blocks and items that this mod adds. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, to start off, we have the password protected chest. First, before we get into exactly how it works, let's see how we craft it. So what we need to do is we need to get a chest. And then if we place down the chest, it's just a regular chest. So we have to craft a keypad, which you craft but like this with eight stone buttons and iron pressure plate and then you get the key panel we have that right here and then if we shift and right click on the chest it becomes a password protected chest so now first time that we open up the chest it'll tell us to enter a code so for now we'll just go with one two three and that is our code and the next time we want to get in we can go one two three and then we can put whatever we want in there and that's the way it works and now, before we continue, we should get into some important mechanics of this mod. Basically, if you see up top, it says owner pixel king 99 underscore. So basically, if anybody else tries to break this block, which then uh, they can't, and it's like bedrock pretty much, it's unbreakable. But you can only break the block if you're using the universal block remover. You can break your own blocks. And you craft that just with shears and two iron ingots. And then if I go into survival mode, I can go like that. And it breaks it. And now if I place it down again, since I broke it, I have to enter in a new passcode. And then I can go like that and put stuff in it again. But... Now, let's say uh, we want to test using a different owner, but since this is a single player world, we can't do that. So basically, one what we can craft is we can craft the universal owner changer, which we craft like this, which we craft with this, which we'll get into later, like that. And then what we do with the universal owner changer is we take it and put it in an anvil and we rename it to whatever we want. I already got it renamed to Technoblade and then we'll change the owner to Technoblade like that and now if we use the universal block remover then it d says that that we cannot break it and that's how it works. And it's not just blocks actually from this mod that can be reinforced. So basically the majority of any vanilla items like if we just go like this for example can be reinforced if we just place it down or actually we can keep it in our inventory too but what we have to do is we have to craft the universal block reinforcer and there's three levels each one gets like more expensive and then like that and then this one requires a reinforced block so you have to create number one and then you can create number two or three using reinforced blocks and number three gets really expensive with the nether star so then if we use a universal block reinforcer level one we can go like this and then we can put our bricks in there and then if we close the inventory with uh, e it becomes reinforced and now if anybody else tries to break it they can't and we can also left click and it'll make it reinforced and yeah so that way you can build your house like this and nobody else could get into it okay so now these password protected chests aren't completely secure so basically if somebody decides that they really want to take a gamble and try and get into your stuff then what they can do is they can craft in a code breaker so basically this thing is super expensive with the nether star as well and then you have a, a very slim chance that you'll get to open it so let's see take a gamble and nope failed and it only has three durability as you can see there so if we try again nope nope and you might waste a whole nether star without being able to get in yeah we wasted two nether stars and couldn't get in yeah so it's super expensive but it does allow you a chance to get into somebody's stuff so i mean it might be worth it if let's say they have like uh, a whole bunch of wither skulls that you know are in there okay so next up we have probably like the most one of the like my favorite features from this mod and it's the sentry so basically 
the way it works is first we'll get one and then basically what you can do is if you place it down you want to make sure that you place it on a reinforced block so that nobody else can break it because like here I'll quickly demonstrate if I go into survival I can just go like this and I can break it even though it's not owned by me but let's say I go like this and I place that down and place that down I'll have to go like that and then if I change the owner again for both those then I cannot break this at all like it's all unbreakable and I can't do anything so you have to make sure that 100% of the time you have to make sure it's placed on a reinforced block so that nobody else can uh, break it so then basically the way this thing works is once you place it down you can set it to different modes as you can see up top but it's easier easiest to see if I use this the sentry remote access tool you place you craft it like this craft it like this and then you get that and also the crafting recipe for the sentry is like that and you need blocks of iron and this thing which we'll get into later which is crafted like that so it costs a whole lot of iron so basically what you can do with the sentry remote access tool is if you click on it you can see that there's an X down there and it's not linked as you can see right there so then if what you do is you click on it it's linked then now you can control what it does so right now we have it to aggressive mode which basically means that the top is showing like this oh yeah I probably should show you that texture and then if we set it to camouflage then it hides and let's say um, we set the difficulty to easy and we get a zombie and we'll have to make sure that it is attacking hostile mobs then there and then if we go like that there and then it goes back and hides again once there's nothing nearby which will show how it's quite useful later so then you can also change it so that it attacks hostile mobs players hostile mobs and players and then yeah and you can also set it to idle which basically means that it just does nothing it sits there now one of the most useful things that this does is basically um what you can do is you can use this disguise module which um if we go like this you craft it like that and then with a painting and then what you can do is you click on it and you can put whatever block you want put it right there and then you can go like that and then if we change this to camouflage then it hides there you can walk over it just like any other block and then yeah and then nobody will know it's there so then you can make it so that whenever like somebody else walks on top of it then it'll surprise them and they won't see it coming so like yeah so then it, Nobody will know it's there, and then it'll start attacking as soon as somebody's nearby or something. Oh yeah, and if you want to pick it up, you can just shift and right click on it, and it'll drop. Instead of having to break the block underneath it. Okay, so I should do the disguise module, but as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of other useful modules here so if we go like this harming module it's crafted like this it, you can uh, use it on various different things which you can see if you use the security craft manual then we go like to different modules and yeah it tells you that but the best way to figure out what it what you can use it on is if you use this which you cr I showed earlier but you can craft like that with an emerald to iron and then what you can do is if we go like this then we can put these different modules on it and it tells you exactly what it does so then so with the universal block modifier if we click on this it won't work because it's just gonna pick it up so uh, only modules that you can use on the sentry is the speed module and I believe the camouflage module and the allow list and yeah 
and I believe that is the only ones. And then basically, speed module basically just makes it attack faster. It's quite helpful, especially considering it may not do a lot of damage, but like even if you're using like unbreaking three netherite armor, unless you're like constantly repairing it, you can like break the armor really quick. Another neat feature that you can do with the sentry is if you let's see, have a chest underneath it and put like any sort of projectile in it, like arrows or like eggs or snowballs, then it'll take the stuff out of it. Like if it's a uh, reinforced chest or just regular chest, doesn't matter. And now I have arrows in there, and it'll do even more damage to the guy. And then also, like I mean. If you're like rich, you can use um, uh, arrows of damaging or whatever, harming, and they are pretty good, like two hits. The reason I'm not using zombies is because undead mobs are immune to potion effects, so it kind of just messes with things. So then if I go like this, I take that out. And also another neat thing is if I go like this and give the sentry poison, then now has poison too. It shoots projectiles that do poison too. Okay, so the other modules we have is the harming module, which we craft. I sh the other modules we have is the storage module, which we use like this. And then the there's also the redstone module. And then there's the loudest module, which we pay, craft like that. And then the denialist module, which we craft like that. Smart module, which is quite expensive, and then the speed module, like that. And this one, I'll show you. Basically, this like allows it to make it so, or well, actually, it'll be easier to demonstrate. So if I go like this, I can add pixel, and then there, and then add and now I'm whitelisted on this let's say I like added someone else then they would be whitelisted as well and they can get into this so if I go like that go like that and I don't even have to put in a password and the people who I whitelist won't have to either and then let's see if I use the deny list module and I go like this there And then we go like this, deny list, and then, yeah, you, I can't open it even though I own it, but I still can take it out. But if somebody else owned it, then like it would prevent them from even having a chance of guessing the password, because anybody could guess it with the password. So yeah, it's quite helpful. You can stop it. Like make it so there's a 0% chance of people stealing your stuff and it also sometimes is like annoying for like putting in the password because usually it'll be more secure than one two three and then you don't even have to open it with entering the password and then the smart module basically is just a general make something better most of the time which I'll show you and the harming module I believe is only useful for one thing and I'll show you when we get there and yeah Okay, so then next up we have this, which is the cage trap. If we go like that and we go like that, it's kind of expensive. Three iron blocks, that'll be expensive early game. And then reinforced iron bars, which can cost a bit if you only have a level one block reinforcer. So then if I change the owner to the Technoblade, and then I'll go into, or well, it might work in creative. Yep, now I am trapped in here. And I can get out with Ender Pearls. I think if uh, you had blocks like right here. Okay, so next we have the password protected furnace. Basically, it's not that complicated. It's just a furnace, but like a password protected chest. And instead of using a chest, you use a furnace which is not too complicated. And then you can just go like this and go like that. And it's the exact same. 
Okay, next we have the inventory scanner. Okay, so basically the way the inventory scanner works is if you place down one, it won't do anything and it'll just like sit there being useless. But if you place down two, it'll be like this and if any, what you can do is you can select what items it doesn't like and then provided you have one of these two things in which will make it a merit stone if it has this item in your inventory or store the thing if it has that in your inventory then it'll do that but this won't do anything to me because I'm the owner also you can make it so like you need you need to put one of those two in so yeah and uh, you can also set it to solidify fields if you have that thing on in your inventory and if it won't work for me because I'm the owner and you can also go like that for fun yeah and then you can also allow people like so that it won't check their inventory yeah make it so that it'll be smarter and then disguise it so that it'll just look normal oh and a neat feature of the mod is if I go like this then it does both of them because they're connected and linked so yeah it's hard to demonstrate on the single player world but yeah so then if we go like that. Okay, so next up we have the keycard reader. And it looks super complicated and it is kind of complicated. So there's a lot of things to go over, so we'll just go through it slowly. So first we can go like this and then let's say then we have to select a signature. And basically you just want to have like the same signature for all your cards and that, I believe. So we'll just set this to a signature one one and yeah that'll be good okay and then we link that and now it's signature zero zero one 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 and yeah now got that next up we have the key card levels so basically the way this works is this is the level one key card we can get uh level two level three level four level five level and yeah up to level five that one will get to soon so basically then we can choose does it uh, accept anything like above the level like greater than whatever level is selected so right now level one selected so if we go like that then it's everything above level two and if we go like that everything above level three and so on or does it just have to be equal so is only level threes able to enter or level twos or level fours or whatever so then we can select that and if we go like that or that or that or that and then we can also use a smart module and then basically all that does is if we take a smart module and we put it right there then we can go like this and we can just select not level ones not level threes and not level fives yeah so it's like that and then yeah and then okay so that's that part and that's this and that's a this and that's this so then what we can also do is let's see if we have a limited use key card we can go like this and like that and we go like limited use and then if we take a level two just because we use the level one then we have a level two key card but it's both limited use so like now we can decide how much uses so if we put this here we can go like that and then we can decide how about you can use this three times and now you can only use this level two key card three times after we do a link and now it has the right signature and then like that and now three uses so then if we demonstrate this quickly we can go like that and then limited use and now it should be down to two and now it should be down to one and now it's down to zero except for I believe I mean yeah and that just doesn't work but you still have it so then yeah and this one will work because it this one won't work because it's not allowing level one so if we go like that it'll allow level one and then but let's say we try this thing it does not work because it's like not set to the right code so right now it's set to 111 if we go like that 
and go like that then it's sig it's a different signature than this so then it oh, oh yeah and as long as this stays at like so this one will work now because it's at this thing set to 112 but this one won't work because it's set to 111 so we'll have to go like that and then we'll want to go like this and link and now it'll work so we'll go like that it'll work and now this one will work as well but as soon as we change this to like that and then we go like that this one will not work because it's not 112 it's 111 and this one will and if we wanted to we could just change this but for this made all of them and yeah there yeah and that is basically how it works you can set uses and set levels and set numbers so it's super secure so the way that we craft these different key cards is as follows uh, three iron, three gold for the level one, and then bricks for level two, and then nether bricks for level three, and then magenta dye for level four, and then for level five we use purple dye, and then for the limited use one we use lapis. Okay, next up we have the keypad. It is quite simple. We just require a frame to make it which you can craft like this really easy and then we just need a keypad which I already showed but I'll just go like that again and then if we quickly break this we go like that and now it's just an empty frame does nothing and then place that and now it's there then we just set a code and then we can just use it to let's see I'll just quickly grab that open these reinforced doors which we'll get to in a bit there and now yeah it's really simple next we have the laser block this thing is pretty cool so basically we can go like this and i believe that is yep that is as far as it can go four blocks gap and now if we we have to set it to a harming module and this is the one thing that uses the harming module you can also use this and disguise module and if we go like that now it should do damage and but it'll only do damage if we have the universal name owner changer which I seem to have okay so now it has the universe the harming module which I believe will change if we go like that yeah now the harming module is out but basically if the harming module was in there then well yeah it does four and a half I believe let's see there so we are at full health and it does half health without armor but if you're like wearing full netherite or something with prop four it'll do like barely anything it'll do like half a heart I think yeah and then that's the way it works and then if we go like this we can also go like that there and then if we want to we can go like that there and it's quite useful especially early game because it's quite easy to craft like this and yeah and how you craft the key card reader is just like this with a reinforced like natural stone uh, type yeah reinforced slash stone and then a hopper and then the way you craft the inventory scanner the way you craft the inventory scanner is if we just go like this with the laser block and the ender chest and we craft a laser block like this and just like that okay next we have the motion activated light which if we set it to night time like that it'll be a lot more noticeable so if we go like this and then we just go I'll set my brightness down 
and then we go like that there and if I'm over there it'll turn on I come over here and now I'm nearby and it'll turn on and that's basically it you can craft it just like this with a redstone lamp this thing and that which you craft that like that again next we have the username logger so basically the way this works is if we place it down like let's say over here then what it'll do is it'll name any players that come by but it has to be activated by redstone so I'll let's see grab a redstone block which you may want to do because then it'll always log uh, players or you can use other methods from this mod so then I believe if we change the owner then uh, it should be logging us right now and then I am not sure if I able to access it yep I am because I'm in creative and there okay so next we have the alarm it is really simple basically if we just craft it just like that with reinforced glass which is just reinforcing the glass and then note block and redstone dust and basically the way this works is if we place it down it'll do nothing at the moment and then yeah yay okay next we have the portable radar which being showy like being used for crafting a lot of different things and we craft this as I've shown like that and basically it'll be I guess easiest to show if we go like uh, which we use will use a alarm so then if we go over here we set a portable radar next to the alarm Okay, so basically what the portable radar does is you can set it to uh, emit a redstone signal so that like you can uh, power an alarm or some sort of thing, but that won't work because I'm the owner. You can also do it to send a message if somebody's nearby it, and yeah. And then you can also set it how much it delays, how far away they can be, and then yeah. You can change all these different things. Right now, it won't work because I'm the owner, and it'll message Technoblade if um, we do that. And if we put a redstone module in here, and then we place this down, and then we change the owner, it'll just come out. But basically, if the redstone module was in there, what it would do is it would turn on the alarm and like anything right here. Okay, next we have the projector. It is a really cool thing, like, and I mean really cool. So if we just go over here like this, and it'll face like that, and then we can get a block or to use, which I'll use another right for fun. And then if we go like this, we can decide we want it to project a netherite block there and now it is projecting a netherite block and we can change all of these different things now it's right here and as you can see it is not an actual netherite block so if we just go like that then we can walk through it and yeah so you can use it to uh, make secret doors and stuff like that you need to actually have a block in the right if you want to use one. And recently they have really upgraded it. You, there used to be a sort of texture glitch. So you had to use it kind of in low light levels. I believe it was. To make it work. But now as you can see it like blends in perfectly. And then if we go like that. It'll be too high. And then there. We made a secret entrance that nobody can even notice. Then if we go like that and width and yeah oh, there we can go like that there and as you can see anything will override it and now we have a giant fake wall of netherite blocks and we can also change the way this works by going like that 
there and now we can move that like that and yeah and if we remove all the grass it'll just appear there and then you can like make a trap like if somebody's walking by they'll just fall into a pit of lava or something you can do it's quite neat and very useful very very useful probably one of the best features ever and then we can also go like that go like that those are the two options yeah it's very amazing like it's really cool okay so next up we have the uh, uh the what you call it the trophy system which i believe is like supposed to be out of black ops or like some sort of call of duty thing and basically it's really really nice so what we can do is we can set it here and then if we change the or actually i'm not sure if the owner matters if we go like this and we go like this then oh yeah it should what it does is it destroys entities that it so basically if we go like this it just destroys the arrow it works best if you have a speed module which we have here and then because right now it's quite slow and if we go like Okay, let's test. Does that damage us? Nope. There. Yeah, so that's basically how it works. It'll just shoot. Uh, entities and let's test that with an ender pearl as well there yep and then it'll stop us from ender pearling provided it is fast enough there yes yeah, so it's really neat really good really useful stop from people ender pearling like if you just have a bunch of those sitting around during uh, like in a place where you PvP, it'll be difficult for people to end a pearl or shoot bows or like anything. Okay, so next we have the security camera. Oh yeah, and basically the way you make it is if we go like this and then we go like if we go like that, you we make with sentry and then reinforce block iron and just remind our sentries like this and like that. And it's really expensive, I believe. Let's see. How many iron blocks does that come up to? One, two, three, four. Basically, like five iron blocks just to make one of these, which is quite expensive without an iron farm, at least. Or early game. Okay, so next we have the uh, security camera and the monitor. So basically, it's not too complicated. Although, like, let's say uh, we go like this. We go like that. And then we use the camera monitor and we link it up and that has the check mark. And we go like this and we can just look out of it. And use WASD to move up, down in that. And you can, let's see, uh, equals and minus to zoom in and zoom out. there and then you can also uh, turn on night vision and that it's really cool and then if you shift you can exit it but the thing is like uh, so you can all, like the way it works is it teleports you there kind of and puts you into like a kind of spectator type mode and then you can only look here and you can't move so like they can't just make it so your body stays here and it does that it's like too complicated and also, uh, one thing that I know lots of people like request in the Discord because I joined it, is that they make it so that you can view, look out the camera, and like put the monitor in a frame or whatever, and then just look at it like a 
an actual monitor, but that is also too complicated and like would be really difficult. So just like don't go around like asking for that to be made. And basically the way this works is if with the secured camera reinforced, so you need a reinforcer and then like that. And then the monitor, we can go like that. And yeah, not too expensive. And also you can have up to 30 different cameras. And also I believe like the camera has to be in a loaded chunk. So uh, if I go like that and I fly over here, it still works. And then if I fly a ways over here, yep. And now it's out of range. We cannot view it. Then if we go like that. There, and now we're back with it loaded again, so we can view it. So you have to make sure you're in the loaded chunk. Okay, next up, we have the Protecto. We craft it like this, with a reinforced obsidian and eye vendor and daylight detector. And basically, if we go over, or actually, let's go over here. Uh, let's set the difficulty to easy. And then, if we, uh, let's see, slash, or actually, one sec. We'll do night, just because. And then we'll do slash weather, weather uh, I believe it works in rain, so there. The weather is now set to rain, and as you can see, it changed to blue. And then if we just spawn a zombie, it'll strike it with lightning. I believe it'll recharge after a bit. Yeah, and then we can have multiple of them. There, and now it's recharged. And then it'll strike it again with lightning. There, and then all three of them recharge there. And then they all... There, yeah, pretty insane. There. Yeah. And that that's, like, super cool. I believe it's, like, uh, inspired by Astro Man, I think they said, or something. In the uh, Discord or whatever. Yeah, but it's pretty cool and pretty good. But kind of expensive, I guess. I mean, not too much. If you want to have, like, a hundred of them, you could. Okay, next we have the retinal scanner, which we craft like this with an eye of ender. And then if we demonstrate it using the reinforced iron door, then if we have a retinal scanner here, it'll show our face on there. Isn't that so amazing and handsome? And yeah, there. Then we can place down the door, and then that's because we looked at it. Now if we look at it, there, and then it opens. And then, yeah, and then you can also whitelist people to it with the whitelist module and you can disguise it as a block which would confuse people quite a bit and be pretty cool. You can also go like that and send the message like it says hello pixel king and yeah. And now we can turn that off and on. Signal length we can make it super long so like there and now it'll stay open for a long time. Yeah, so that's basically all there is to it. And if we go like that and that. Okay, next we're getting into some explosives. We got, I'll just grab all of these and then take it to my safe detonation area. And then take that. And yeah, then we will also, or yeah, there. And then if we go like this. There, and now we've TP'd over to our safe detonation area, which is quite a ways away. We can uh, test these out. I think I forgot to grab the mine, which I'll just quickly grab here. So these are the different basic ones, and then we can go like that, that, or actually no, these will blow each other up. Okay, so. 
if we get the universal owner changer and we go like that um, we can walk over it and it blows us up pretty simple and then yeah and we craft the mine just regular mine like this and that gets three mines and then we can do the bouncing betty which we craft like this which is just one more piece of iron basically and then we can go like this change the owner and then we go like that and then it goes up and then it explodes and it's quite a bit bigger than the other one and then next we have the claimer which we go like this and then uh, there a tiny bit of delay but yeah and just like that and we craft the claymore like this with the bouncing betty string tripwire hooks and then yeah and then next we have the intelligent munition system which we'll go over here for well or actually uh we do not have to change the owner we just have to do slash difficulty easy and slash time uh set night there and then we can spawn a zombie and we'll see and yeah that's pretty insane and then we can go let's see what's the range nope 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 there there and it got all of them yeah and as you can see it uses up its four ammo and we craft it just like this portable radar and then yeah like that and kinda expensive but you can also reload it like so and then yeah so if we go like this there and then it And it crashed, I think. Oh, there. There. There, now it should be able to kill them all. And it blew itself up. Oh, well. Yeah, but it's pretty powerful. And now, the next thing we have... Or here, let's go like this and then that and then one thing we can do is we can go like this and this and uh no not that um and then we can link it up to this uh this and this and now if we use the mine remote access tool which you can craft like this kind of expensive at least early on then yeah we can click on it and we can either choose to turn defuse it and then activate it so that it becomes non-dangerous and all that and then we can detonate it so this one will be just the regular mine so if we go like this or not maybe we detonated that one and then we can detonate this one and that blew up the other one but let's say this thing can like hold a max of a six so if we just go like there we could go like that this will probably end up blowing a few of the other ones up but we'll just see there and then we can go back here and if we go like there and we blew them all up which is pretty nice you can remote detonate explosives quite handy and then another thing that I show is the wire cutters so let's say you see that somebody has a mine here then we can defuse it and now as you can see it's green and I believe um, perhaps if you use a flint and steel then you can reactivate it 
and now it's dangerous skin, but not for me because I own it. So yeah, so if you notice that somebody has a mine there, you can defuse it. And also, there's a bunch of different like variations. So like, if you wanted to, you could just set a sand mine just up somewhere. Like, let's see, where would sand look normal? Um, maybe over here, if we just go like that. All right, now it looks all normal. And then we can just set it to this there and now if we go into survival mode and we just walk over all these sand mines which you can notice up top so you might want to be paying attention there and that's pretty insane yeah and we just blew this whole thing up do not want to die yeah so it's pretty insane and I believe yeah there if you even try to break it it'll blow you up so you'll have to defuse it and yeah there that is also there's the track mine which is pretty simple you can also go like that and it is pretty pretty powerful as you can see and we go like that to get it it's Wait, how many was that? Four. Yeah, and also it'll activate if a minecart goes over it. So let's see if we get a mine, mine, as I said, cart. Then we can go like that. And we'll make a fun little track of death. There. And yeah, pretty powerful. And also the way that you craft all of these various mines let's just go with the sand one is you just combine sand with mine or whatever or you want and yeah it can be kind of annoying paying a diamond ore for that but yeah it's pretty pretty handy especially if you want to have an assassination or something and I believe that is it for like explosives and that yeah that is all of the explosives so we can quickly teleport back over to oh the button blew up okay and we can just tp back to the main area okay so next we went through all the explosives and i showed you the track mine which is over there i'll go with this this is the fake water and the fake lava so if we just go like this it's pretty simple like let's say if we go like and then we can also just go like this okay so then if we go into survival we jump into fake lava we have fire resistance and regeneration three wait does this work if i have taken damage um let's quickly test that theory i think i can survive this fall, um, uh, that wasn't very much damage. There, we took three hearts. Yeah, and then we can get healed, like, a whole lot. That's quite handy. Especially if you're in the middle of battle, you can just heal up quick. And it does nothing to you. And let's quickly go like that. And maybe go like that. And then we can go to survival and the fake water. It just damages you. And it doesn't even do that much. Like, it's just like, this is no armor, keep in mind. And it does, like, nothing. It took us a long time to get that much damage. Yeah. So, that's basically the way it works. It's pretty simple. Uh, mine. And then we have the taser. Which we can go like this. And if we set the uh, time to night and the difficulty to easy okay so then we can use our taser on them and as you can see up top it gives nausea to slowness to and weakness to but let's say we have redstone in our inventory which we don't need because we're in creative we can shift and go like that and that becomes a powered taser and now it has level 5 of nausea slowness and weakness which is pretty OP but let's see if I go into survival mode I can go like this and it uses up the redstone and it also has the cooldown and that and like look at this he's trying to get to me but he can't even like 
do anything. And in 11 seconds you can. Yeah, so then it needs the time to regenerate. And that and does a tiny bit of damage, but like nothing much. And look, let's see, if he attacks me, he has weakness 5. Doesn't even do anything. And yeah, he's going to be able to kill me in a second. So let's go back into creative. And difficulty peaceful and time set day. And yeah, that is the taser. We craft it with iron, gold, bow, and two sticks. Just like that. Pretty simple, pretty handy. Fun to taunt your friends with. Although it might make them annoyed and then you might end up getting murdered. Oh, and the mine and the wire cutters, you craft it just like this with four iron and two and a shear. Okay, next up we have the electrified fen iron fence and the electrified iron fence gate, which we just go over here and then we can go like this there. And then if we want to change the owner so that we can see what it does there. And now if we go into survival mode, we cannot open this. And if we touch it, then we start taking a lot of damage. Good to keep out people because, I mean, it's not too hard to get over. Craft it just like this with iron and defense. And then with iron and defense gate, of course. Next up we have the reinforced door, the reinforced iron trap door, reinf the keypad door, and the scanner door. So basically, the way, first we'll start off with the reinforced door. We craft it like this with the iron door and then eight iron, so kind of expensive, but it gives you, yeah, just one reinforced trap door, which we use the reinforcing thing for, and then keypad door, which is door, and a keypad, and then the scanner door, which is a retinal scanner, and a door. So then basically what we want to do to uh, show the, the first thing off, which I have done so many times, but I'll do it just again because we'll go like that. And then we have this, and then we have that. And now it is open. Pretty simple. And yeah, just like that. Next we have the keypad door, which is pretty simple. It's just a door and a keypad put into one. And we can get through. And then there's also this trap door, which we'll quickly do. And then there, now it's open, so like it, it's good for if you want to go down. But you can actually like change it. There's like, you, if you click on that part of the block or that part, that part. Yeah, nothing you do can change the rotation, which is kind of annoying. But I mean, it's okay. So then, yeah, you can go down, basically. And then also we have the scanner door, which is pretty simple. You just look at it, and then you go through. And then... Yeah, that is basically it. And then you can look at it and then go through. And you have to make sure that you close it by looking at it. It won't close on its own, like there. And now I have to look at it again. Look at it again. And look at it again. Yeah, those are the different doors. And next up, I'll just skip that for now. We have the oak sign and then it says, this is a secret. We switch it and now we can't see it. So if we have a oak sign, we can type whatever we want. That is our code so we don't forget. And then only we can see it. And then now only the owner can see it. And if we go like this, um, if we go like that, then we go like this. We can add an allow list module so that specific people that we want to see it can see it. So like, let's say you wanted to have just a random like chest that you reinforce chest that you leave somewhere for your friend. You can have the code like on a sign in front of it or like something like that, you know. And yeah, that's basically the way it works. And now we're on to the final item. I believe, yep, we are on to the final item that I'm going to be covering, which is the block pocket manager. Okay, so the way the block pocket manager works is if you place it down, you will probably want to put a storage module on it so that you can put stuff inside of it over here. 
and then for this demonstration I'll just go with 9 by 9 and okay so basically what it does is it creates um, a box that only you can get into and right now we've selected it so it'll be in this space and basically okay so you have to uh, use these various blocks to uh, create like the special thing or if you have the storage module in you can put them in here and then click auto assemble so then if I just go like this and put the right amount of blocks in and then like that there and then that should be enough and then I'll do auto assemble and now it'll all build itself so now basically what it'll do is if I click activate on this then only I can get in here and nobody else can and it's quite nice because then like it's 100% secure unless like somebody does uh, an ender pearl glitch below it or something uh, but yeah you can just make it extra big so yeah yeah and then nobody else can get 100% secure and then uh, you can activate now anybody can get in, deactivate, and then, yeah. And then you can, like, uh, select various different sizes up to 25 by 25. Yep. Yeah, so that's the biggest one you can make, which is, like, pretty big. And I guess if you really need one that's even bigger, you can just put multiple, multiple of them together. And then, yeah. So we'll have to go back to nine by nine and then activate and I just broke up accident. Okay. So the way you craft the block pocket manager is like this with reinforced block of iron, redstone, and crystal quartz, which you craft with the block pocket wall, which you craft with that 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 there and then you can craft uh, this like that and you craft these with prismarine crystals and nether quartz so you'll probably need to uh, which, uh, to make a, a farm for what we call it, the the dudes the guardians so that you can get all the resources especially if you want to do one that's like 25 by 25 and also one more thing that you can do with it or well one more thing is you can use the disguise module and it basically just makes it so people can't see you inside which is nice because then let's say you want to have like a I guess there's probably not a good way to make a secret entrance out of here considering you can't really get out unless you walk through the walls but I mean it can be handy and you can just crouch and sneak through and then yeah you can also add the whitelist module so that you can like allow other people to pass through the walls so yeah but like that's basically all there is to it and that is going to be the end of this video um if you want to join the discord for this i will leave a link in this description along with links for all the different mods that i used and yeah thank you so much for watching if you want to see i don't know more guides and stuff then subscribe like the video if you like it and yeah i'll see you next time